Hello and welcome, I'm Raziel, and so we had Adepticon this week, and obviously it's a big games workshop convention, it's very much centred around them, so we don't really see much from other companies. Mantic tend to do things there, tend to show off new games there as well, I mean it's a good business move, to you know, but a lot of tabletop gamers and they're there to see the big guy, and of course people want to see the new, uh, you might, might want to try something different or something new, and I also think Basically, this was probably one of the funniest things I've seen. This, To me, this was very ballsy of Mantic to do this. You go to your competitor's convention with an IP that made more money in a week than their entire business made in a year. I just thought it was funny. That just amused me, to be honest with you. You know, uh, In 2023, I think GW made like $134 million. Halo 5 Guardians made $500 million in the first week. So, yeah. <laughs> it, just, it just amuses me that Mantic sort of had the balls to do this off, pull this off. It just amuses me. But anyway, I am a fan of Halo. I do enjoy playing the Halo games. I finished them all. I finished all the single player games. No, I haven't finished. I haven't played Infinite yet. I've got to play Infinite. But yeah, I have played you know, Reach, ODST, Spartan Wars, uh, Halo Wars. I, I really enjoy this franchise. It's one of my favourite sci-fi franchises. Yeah, there's a lot of parallels with them and for uh, us. Warhammer 40k, don't get me wrong, you have the indoctrinated children to become superhumans, super soldiers in power armor, they face aliens with plasma weapons and, you know, all sorts of cool stuff, so, yeah, I do like, like I said, I like Halo, I've been playing, my first one I played was Halo 3, and then I played Halo 2 and Halo 1, uh, yeah, and Halo Reach is my favorite, and it's also one of my favorite games of all times, so I really do enjoy the series. It's, it's a fun series. It's got a fun lore. It's got a en very enjoyable lore and background. But don't read the Halo Fall of Reach by uh, Halo Covenant by Michael Bendis, the comic. It's not that great. It's just a bit silly, to be honest with you. Uh, but things like the Fall of Reach book is fantastic. Well worth a read if you ever get a chance. So yeah, I'm a big fan of Halo and Master Chief. My favourite Spartan, by the way, is George. And... Damn, he, he was a hero till the end. Anyway, let's talk about the game. Well, you have a tabletop version of uh, Halo. Well, basically, it's a tabletop version of the team battle uh, on multiplayer. It's not a really a narrative game, which is a bit of a shame, to be honest with you, because I would like to see this expanded in to be able to be narrative and lore-driven within the story, you know, because basically it is just team deathmatch on a bit on your tabletop that's what it is you play as well you have two main forces the red and the blue obviously this is a bit of the old joke by the long gone rooster teeth series red versus blue if anyone remembers that so those were the colors of the models you get for the standard edition there's two editions standard and spartan the standard edition is basic the basic one and yeah and you play team deathmatch as i said and so you can go around the board, and you can, it's a very, uh, very simplified version of the game. And you go around the board, you can even pick up weapons while you use them as well. So, like I said, it's very much, you, you can see where they're going with this. And a lot of IPs don't really go well into tabletop because they either try, they lean too hard into the IP. And, you know, some things just don't fit the tabletop. But a game like this, I would say, definitely fits the tabletop because it is basically tactical shooting each other in the face, you know. And it's it, this has got me quite excited. It really has. And having this nice little surprise come out, I enjoyed it. So it's basically it's a two-player game, uh, it's a short game. And you have these are your Spartan models. As you can see, it's like I said, it's a fairly licensed IP. It's you can see that this is the Spartan armors. <coughs> Sorry about that. The Spartan weapons, you can see the assault rifle there, and the battle rifle as well, and the SMG. So you can see it, and there's also the variation of how much we can use in which are in the customer creator zone, uh, create a part of yeah, Halo Reach that first started off in properly. There's one that looks like I always say this is a Mills helmet, helmet, and if I get the chance, I would paint him completely like a Mill because he. And you know, you've got the color schemes here. This one is definitely from. This is based on your, I, I think it's a, the captain of All of Reach, I can't remember his name. I don't really go for stories, I go for games. I always have done. But you you know, these, you can see these are very, they're very nice looking minis, they are. 
they look really good. They look like they they look like the the game, and that's not more you can ask for. I think they look really good. And basically, there's a bit of a fluff here. The year is 2560. Humanity was forced to the brink of extinction by the alien alliance known as the Covenant. And in victory, many of our worlds were glassed and left in ruins. From the ashes of the Covenant Wars, a new generation of super soldiers has been trained in the war game simulation, spot pitting Spartan fire teams against an almost infinite combination of potential threats, including each other. And here is your, um, what are they called? The Arbiter. The elites. These are really cool looking. I would definitely paint these into different colours, like the gold, the red, the blues. Yeah. Again, they look exactly like they do in the game, and this is all you could really ask for. I mean, this is what they are, and you know, he's got his pulse. Um, that's not the pulse. That's the carbine pulse carbine there. The needler, the plasma weapon, the plasma rifle. Yeah, that's what it's called. It's not a rifle, though. It always confuses me that one. And so, yeah, I do like this needler. It looks like a proper needler. As well, so you can see they have really taken what the game is about and what the what they look like and put it on the tabletop, and it's I can't I can't really argue. It's see one of the parts of the game. Let's not go to that bit here. Is if we look here, got these cards. Basically, each character actually has their own stack card. <coughs> that's what it is, and that's. All it is, basically, for whichever model you use, you have a card for it. And you can actually pick up things along the table as well. While you play, like weapons, health, etc, etc. Things you would find while you're playing the multiplayer game. Or would be able to be picked up in the game as well. Again, it really is trying to fit that in. I don't know how that would feel, really. I'm not a big fan of using cards like that. Because I don't have the best of memories when it comes to stuff like that. So I'll probably end up picking up, like, the... Um, Plasma Sword and totally forget I got it and continue using the Assault Rifle. And also it means it doesn't really depend on WYSIWYG either. Because it, it can change while you're playing the game. So you, what the model does and looks like isn't dependent on how it plays. Which is fantastic. So you, you can loads of conversion opportunities here as well. I, I just got... I, it's really interested me. Now, my issue here is the price. See, this is the Flashpoint Spartan Edition. You get uh, <coughs> the two, full two red and versus blue. You get your Arbiter guys, your Elites. Um, you get all the scenery. Yeah, if you've been watching my videos for any amount of time, I always put down scenery because it always feels like it's just upping up the price for no reason. And at £100, if even if this was GW, I would say it was overpriced. I'm not going to give Mantic the slip and just say, well, they're a smaller company. I'm going to give... No, 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 no. £100 seems a bit steep. But I am speculating, I got a feeling this may also be attached to the licensing as well. Because obviously, 343 want to take their cut, and they, you know, money's going to go up just because of the franchise fee. So I'm not, it's not a great, I'm not happy with the price at £100. I think it should have been a little bit cheaper. 95 like Dead Zone, that would have been a decent price for this game. But you do get a fair whack of models here, you get all the scenery. The scenery is reversible as well. It's MDF, so it's reversible, so you can slot it and turn it inside out. The map here is also reversible, so you can either play it on the field or like actually inside a building. Have a given that aesthetic. So yeah, it, like I said, it's, to me it's a bit expensive. It, it is a hundred pound. I think it's a bit expensive for all of it, and sixty pound you only get eight minis. Again, I think that's a little bit expensive as well. But like I said, I've got a feeling that's more attached to the fact that it's got free for free attached. And obviously they want to take their cut as well. And they probably had some, you know, telling Mantic how much they want to charge for the game. Because it, it is expensive. And they obviously see how much Games Workshop charge as well. And they're like, hey, we want a bit of that pie. <clears throat> because Mantic usually is the cheaper version. And don't get me wrong, I like Mantic. And I, I this would put me off pay, play, buying it, to be honest with you. At £100. Um, wouldn't be something I'd run out to buy now. I might get this Recon Edition, the smaller edition, just to have a little couple of little games, because that's all you need. That's the other thing about this. At the moment, that's all you need. So £100 will be all you need to pay. So you're not buying any bigger boxes at the moment. But they said they are going to be expanding and bringing out new stuff for it. It's going to be supported for years. So they are looking at really trying to make a lot of money from this one. So maybe the... Like, if this is... 
if that's the bigger price for starting it, maybe, you no, know, in Mantic, the actual models themselves are going to be a lot cheaper to buy as well. And hopefully we'll see things like the Warthog, the Banshee, and the Ghost, and stuff like that available as well to come into play. Because, you know, they are available in multiplayer games. And you can expand into big team battles as well. Uh, I'm excited for it. I'm Like I said, I, I do think it's a bit steep, and it was a nice surprise to come from Adapticon that we see this new game. Yeah, I quite like it. <coughs> anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this video for Saturday. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Because obviously it's pre-order previews and all that. And I'll catch you again in the next one. Link to Railing Games down below as always. And then uh, for up to 20% off your Warhammer. And free delivery after £20. It's uh, Forbidden Planet as well. For comics, DVDs, manga, all that cool stuff. There is uh, my merchandise and my comics. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.